When a man shuts himself off from his neighbors, when he conducts mysterious experiments behind locked doors, there's bound to be talk. There were those who whispered that old Dirk Van Pryn was a sorcerer, and worse. He might never have been remembered at all had not his research led him to the discovery of a most unusual formula for making glass. Mr. Van Preen, it's Mrs. Ames. What do you want? The silversmith left a package for you. Just leave it outside the door, please. Can I bring up your supper now, Mr. Van Preen? Never mind. Just leave the house. Oh, you ought to take something, Mr. Van Preen. I'll fetch up some nourishing soup before I go. It's really no trouble. You haven't had a bite all day. Good night, Mrs. Ames. Yes, sir. Good night. might have ended there if he'd had the courage to smash those spectacles. But like many another scientist, he couldn't bear to destroy his own creation. Too bad. Because years later, others tried them on. In The Cheaters, our story for tonight, a junk man named Joe Henshaw, played by Mr. Paul Newland, a little old-fashioned lady named Marion Alcott, played by Miss Mildred Dunnock. Her nephew, Percy Dean, played by Mr. Jack Weston. And finally, a man who discovered the real purpose of the spectacles, Sebastian Grimm, played by Mr. Harry Towns. What they saw through those yellow gold lenses, they never forgot. And neither will you, my friends. Because as sure as my name's Boris Karloff, this is a thriller. junk for. Store's full of it now. Get yourself a lot of raggedy old clothes and some busted up furniture. That's what you get. How much you bid? Not much. How much, Joe? hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? You promised me we'd unload this crummy place, get into a decent business. Hey, you want to take it easy? The kid's coming. I don't care who's coming. How are we ever going to get out of here? You keep spending every dime on more junk. No more, Maggie. Not in front of the kid again, you hear no more. Hi, Joe. Hey, hiya, Maggie. Morning, Charlie. Here's your mail. Why did 
why don't you admit it, Joe, and get yourself a pair of glasses? I see what I need to see. Yeah. Maybe we ought to leave it that way. Sit down, Charlie. I'll pour you some coffee. Hey, that's great. I didn't get a chance to get any breakfast. You wait on your own time. We'll go get the truck. OK, Joe. Where are we going? Joe's bought another blind lot from the city. Maggie. Paid $100. And I'll bet no other salvage operator bothered a bit on it. But my Joe's got sporting blood. My Joe's a gambler. Hi, huh, Joe? Where is the stuff? The old Bleecker house. The Bleak? Well, mm. well, that place is 200 years old. Why, it's been bad luck since before the First War. Well, you keep your mouth shut. You just do your job and let me run my business. Well, wait a minute, Joe. I didn't say anything. Did I, did I say anything, Maggie? You leave Charlie alone. You want to pick on somebody, pick on me! I'm warning you, not again in front of the kid. Hey, hey, you two, knock it off, huh? Maybe Joe's got a good idea. Fat chance. Well, I heard of a salvager one time that found a half a million dollars in war bonds in an old house. Confederate war bonds. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you get the truck? <laughs> yeah, sure, Joe. <laughs> Keep your eye on him, Charlie. If he finds anything in that dump, I want to know about it. It's fine talk from a wife. Maggie, would you listen? I bid that place because Delahanty down at City Hall would tip me off. <laughs> Delahanty said up in the attic there was some old furniture. Maybe there's some real antique pieces. Charlie's waiting. Maggie, you gotta take a chance once in a while. Maybe our luck will change. From bad to worse. Look what's happened to you, Maggie. Ever since I hired that kid, you've been treating me like dirt. Oh, don't stop that again. All right. We're sinless later. cost you money to haul this stuff to the dump. Who asked you to worry? Maybe the valuable stuff's in here. Joe, look at all these old books. Maybe there's some rare editions here. Looks like another load for the dump. Maybe we can get something for this old desk. Some deal. You ought to sue the city, Joe. Advice from you I don't need. Yeah. Maggie's gonna froth and froam when she hears about Why this. Why don't you go and tell her? Go on, get out of here. What you want me to shut the door? Get out. Okay, Joe.
What's all this? Happy birthday, darling. <laughs> but it's not my birthday. Oh, please don't spoil it, Joe, dear. I know your birthday was last week and I forgot. Now I want to make it up to you. And Joe, yeah. I'm sorry for the way I acted this morning. You're, you're sorry? What's happened? Did that kid tell you I found a basket full of diamonds or something in the Charlie said it was nothing but rubbish. And all of a sudden, I realized how disappointed you must have been and how rotten I've been. Uh, rotten and unselfish, Joe. And I'm sorry. Uh, well, you know, maybe I haven't been so easy to live with either. Hmm? Go wash up now. Dinner will be ready in a little while. Where'd you get those funny old cheetahs, Joe? Uh, the Beaker place. Oh. You ruin your eyes wearing somebody else's glasses. What happened to the uh, other letter, Maggie? There was four here this morning. It's only a bill from the gas company. I took care of it for you. You old fool. You hadn't been too cheap to buy a pair of glasses. I'd have lost the pleasure of fleecing you. Huh? If you hadn't been too busy to buy a pair of glasses, I'd have lost the pleasure of spoiling you. Enjoy it while you can, Joe. Tomorrow you'll be dead. What? Enjoy it while you can, dear. Tomorrow you'll be dead tired from hauling all that rubbish. Uh, what did you say uh, the other bill was from? From the gas company. They want to buy this property, Joe. A lot of money. Happy birthday, Joe! I brought you a jug of your favorite poison. And if this doesn't kill you, I will, ape man. And if this doesn't fill you up, I'll flip, man, because it cost me a bundle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the matter, Joe? You sick? Come on. What you need's a little drinky. How about it, Maggie? Oh, I don't know, Charlie. The doctor said... Hey, come on! It's his birthday! Just one minute. You should have been an actress, baby. Phil, he's right to the top, honey. The quicker we get him drunk, the quicker we get him over to the old house. Hey, come on, Joe. Here's pie in your eye. Many happy returns, darling. <laughs> Three of us are going on a midnight treasure hunt, Joe. And you're going to have a nasty accident, darling. If I tumble down the stairs, don't kill you. I'll climb you with a board. You'll leave the same kind of marks. Come on. Have a Charlie, I said just one. Oh, come on. Don't be a party pooper. Honey, this is one party I wouldn't spoil for the world. You're beautiful, Maggie. In a few hours, you'll be all mine. I never thought it'd be so exciting. Gee, I love you, Charlie. Uh, Charlie, you, uh, you got an education? Sure. What does, uh, V-E-R-I-T-A-S, what does that mean? Well, it's Veritas. It's, uh... It's Latin. It means truth, truth. Where you going, Joe? Oh, I'm gonna put the truck in the garage. Oh, wait a minute, Joe. Look, sit down, will you? I mean, now, look, I ought to get a truck, huh? No, you, uh, you got your fancy clothes on. It's too bad. What does he mean? Too bad. I got my fancy clothes on. Too bad. Who knows what that stupid old coat means? Hey, wait a minute, honey. Wait a minute. I'm not sure. You losing your nerve? Well, no, no. It's, it's only that. It's only what, darling? Maggie, Maggie, what you do to me?
Cheaters. Cheaters. You don't do something like this just because your wife's been cheating on you, Joe. <laughs> Olive and Edward think I'd know when my tea's been drugged. Because today's Thursday. Her bridge club meets downstairs every Thursday, and every Thursday after lunch I get so sleepy, I have to stay in bed. Oh, any simple can can see why she doesn't want me. She's afraid I'll meet her friends. They'll speak my mind. No, I'm not ungrateful. Completely aware of the sacrifice Olive and Edward have gone to to come here and look after me since Mr. Alcott's death. But there's no excuse for keeping me a prisoner in my own home. I'm hungry, Clarence. Diet? Oh, poor. My heart's perfectly normal. It's just that I, I get a little out of breath sometimes. Here she comes. Please. Promise me you'll come back this evening. Oh, bless you. Bless you, Clarence. At least I have one friend left. Enjoy your lunch, Mother Alcott. Oh, I see you drank all your tea. Wouldn't you be disappointed if I hadn't? Oh, Dr. Richards would be disappointed, dear. You know what he said about keeping up your liquid intake? Sleepy? No. Oh. Well, you try closing your eyes for a little while. And if you can't nap, you just ring and I'll help you downstairs. I wouldn't intrude on your bridge party, Olive. Oh, you'd be an asset to any party, Mother Alcott. help you. These are lovely. I don't see the color I require. What color are you looking for? Yellow. Bright yellow. I'll see if we have any in stock. Oh, dear. No. Those are horrid shades. I'm... I'm afraid I'll have to inquire elsewhere. Thank you. 
little escritoire. How much are you asking for it, Mr. Henshaw? It's sold. And my name's Bergen. Henshaw's dead. Yes. Don't you read the papers? He brained his wife and her boyfriend, and a cop shot him. The gas company owns this place now. They bought it from Henshaw's relatives. They're going to put up an office building, so I bought out his inventory. I see. Do you mind if I browse around a bit? Uh, help yourself, lady. Oh, you yeah. uh, see something you like, lady? Yes. How much are these? Yeah. Two bits. seven o'clock. You know what the doctor said about you going out alone? Where have you been? If you must know, I, I've been fitted for some glasses. Oh, my. Aren't they attractive? Don't you think so, Edward? Yes, yes. Very, very unusual. The perfect touch for that Halloween costume the old bat's wearing. Just the perfect touch for the custom look everyone's wearing. I see you've been shopping again. Doddering old thief. Now Edward will have to return all the junk you've stolen. It'll be the last time you'll make trouble for me, old girl. Your next trip will be to the morgue. You look so pale, Mother Alcott. Let me take you up to bed. No, no. I, I, I can manage for myself. Oh, darling, we're already late. You won't mind if Clarence brings up your tray to you. He phoned to say he was on his way. We'll wait for him if it makes you nervous being alone, Mother Alcott. I think we should wait. Oh, she'll be all right. She'll probably make Clarence take her out in nightclub. Goodbye, Mother Alcott. Sweet dreams. It'll be your last after tonight. Clarence. Well, how's my best girl tonight, hmm? I hear you were out in the town this afternoon. Clarence, they're going to kill me. No, 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 Miriam, that's no way to talk. No, it's true. My, this looks delicious. Clarence, as trustee of my late husband's estate, it's your duty to listen to now, me. Now, where would you like to sit? Well, what's wrong with right here by the fire, hmm? I heard them say it. I mean, I... I heard them think it. I don't know, but... I think it had something to do with these spectacles. And after you've had your supper, we'll go downstairs... and watch TV. Come along now, young lady. Come. It's your last meal. I know just the thing to wet your palate. A little brandy. Now, if you promise not to tell on me, I'll go and find Edward's decanter. I'm going to need a drink before I shove you down the stairs, you senile old scarecrow. Clarence, who inherits when I'm dead? What an odd question to oh. ask. Will you know? Edward and Olive, provided they maintain you in this house as long as you live. Which won't be long, Miriam. And for arranging your fatal accident, they're giving half to me. Oh, Miriam, you're ill. You do need a stimulant. I'll be right back.
know, there's one thing I've always admired about Edward. He keeps excellent brandy. It's a status symbol for him, I suppose. Pity he never touches it himself. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. Unbend a little, Edward. Live, 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 live. <laughs> well, you're not going to let your generation down, are you, Miriam? You know how to live. But you're overdoing it a bit, you old hag. Well, what's wrong, Miriam? Aren't you going to join me? Ah, oh, Miriam. You're not going to let an old friend drink by himself. Take it. I don't want any trouble pushing you down the stairs. Bear him. <laughs> to what is most precious between friends, Clarence? The truth. <laughs> Here comes my lord. Cha cha. <laughs> Here comes my lady. Nimble Nambo. Mm -hmm. Just the line. Himself a glass of wine. <laughs> oh. Clarence. You're not saying anything. Dear sweet Clarence. Always ready to listen. To no lady's troubles. Hmm. My head's going round and round and round and round. I still think we're rushing things. Oh, nonsense. It's, it's been nearly a year since Clarence and the old lady died. People have found other things to talk about. I wonder. Well, they all accepted, didn't they? Oh, well, they'd come once, out of curiosity, if for no other reason. Well, I couldn't care less, as long as Thorgerson enjoys himself. Doesn't know it yet, Olive, but he's going to sponsor me into the Gentry Club. I intend to be somebody in this town, and Thorfinnson will be my advocate. That's why I invited Sebastian Grimm and his wife. Sebastian Grimm? That writer? Why, well, he's nothing but a, a... A dissolute founder. Yes, yes, that's how dear sweet Mother Alcott would have characterized him. Well, he's a necessary evil to my plan for the evening. Just bad-mannered enough to get bored with our party and suggest a poker game. Thorgerson's weakness. But you hate gambling. Nevertheless, I intend to show Thorgerson that I know how to lose like a gentleman. What? Why, Edward, you look positively. <laughs> like Benjamin Franklin, the symbol of wisdom and stability? Yes. <laughs> well, that's exactly the impression I wish to create. <laughs> now, don't panic, my dear. We have more money than most of them have right now. Won't be long before they'll be courting our favor. Your servant, madam. 
<laughs> Your costume is very impressive, Dean. Well, thank you very much. I'd swear I was in the presence of the industrious Benjamin Franklin himself. Except for one flaw. Hey, what's that, Greer? Every schoolboy knows that Franklin wore spectacles. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, you're there, Dean. Ben Franklin without spectacles, this is like FDR without a cigarette holder. <laughs> Why don't we all go someplace where we can indulge in Thorgerson's favorite form of larceny? Edward, why don't you men use the library? Well, all right, I, I think I can find a stack of cards and some chips somewhere. This way, gentlemen, please. <laughs> Sorry, Dean. Ace is four. Well, well, well. Well, I was positive I had you beat that time, Thorgerson. You lose your money like it had smallpox. Oh, it's the contest I enjoy, Grim. The give and the take. Winning and losing, secondary. <laughs> mm, spoken like a gentleman. I thought you men might like something from the buffet. Oh, and Edward, look what I found among Mother Alcott's things. <laughs> well, I'll be. Remarkable. Does that satisfy your sense of historical accuracy, Mr. Grimm? Madame, I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> Can't see much. Might improve your game. Deal the cards, Thorkinson. I think I need more chips, Judge. Delighted to take your money, you fat little fool. Huh? Delighted. Patriot's costume to cloak your intentions, you tedious little poser. Ah, oh, here's a laugh. The word veritas is engraved across these spectacles. Yeah? Latin for truth. Yeah. Probably made with his honor in mind. It is supposed to be your calling, isn't it, Judge Fluger? And what exactly is your calling, Mr. Grimm? I'm an unpublished author. Unsung. Unfulfilled. A soul in search of the eternal verities of life. And a decent hand. Mm, three nines. That's more like it. This time I'll give them a run for their money. Not even a miserable pair. I'd better stay in for one bet, though. To make Thorgerson think he's forcing me out. The jerks. They're all waiting for me to clobber them. If they only knew I've held out a pair of aces from the last hand. Aren't you going to look at your hand, Dean? Wait till I tell the boys at the club how the stupid little climber pretended to lose like a gentleman. Wonder if he really did do away with the old lady. What's he staring at me for? Can he see the cards under my arm? Yes. Yes, I see the cards under your arm, Thorgerson. Two aces. What did you say? You held them out from the last hand. Are you accusing Mr. Thorgerson of cheating? I am simply stating a fact. You'd better retract that accusation, Dean, if you know what's good for you. It's all right, Judge. It's the liquor talking. Let's get on with the hand. No! Nobody comes to my house and takes my money and laughs at me. Oh, no! Because I see you all for what you really are, all of you. Raise your arm, Thorgerson. Come on, Mason. Two cards under your arm. They were... Here they are. There they are. He hid them while we weren't looking. What do you say, Thorgerson? What 
can I say without becoming a bad guest? You mean that Dean? Of course. He gathered in the cards the last trick. He hid those two aces because he wanted to embarrass me. I can't imagine why. That's not true! You're lying! Am I? Did you see me hide those cards under my arm? No. No, but I... Then how did you know they were aces? It's... These spectacles. I... I... I'm not certain what there is about them, but I, I just knew. I... There you are, Judge. I leave the verdict to you. I think we all know who the cheater is. No, he was the one that was holding out the two cards. He's the cheater. We'll admit it. What? Oh, tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Go on. Tell them. Dean, stop it. No, no, stop it. Dean, no, stop it. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. I'm afraid. picked the spectacles off the floor, I was merely curious. And then the inscription Veritas intrigued me. And the exchange between Dean and Thorgerson. When Thorgerson asked, did you see me put the cards there? Dean said, no. Thorgerson asked, then how did you know that they were aces? And what did Dean say? These spectacles. I'm not certain what there is about them, but I just knew. Ellen, I tell you, I'm on to something. I know. You'll say it's just another of my harebrained projects. I'll be bored within a few weeks. Well, you're wrong. You're dead wrong. Look. A rough draft of my new book. Complete. Except for the last chapter. Sebastian. Here is the villain. Or the hero, if you prefer. The Cheaters. That's going to be the title of the book, Ellen. The Cheaters. Book about a pair of glasses? Ah. These are not ordinary glasses. I'm convinced that because these spectacles were misused, five people met violent deaths. Five people? And I have them all documented, too. Do you remember the Henshaw murders? Yes. The police officer that shot Henshaw stated that when Henshaw came at him with the crowbar, he was screaming, the cheaters! The cheaters! That was the motive for the murders, infidelity. No. I don't think that Henshaw was referring to his wife and her lover. And I don't think he was attacking the police officer. He was trying to destroy the cheaters. Oh, that's nonsense. Nonsense, huh? Don't be so quick to reject the idea. I also looked up the inquest in the Olcott murder. Olive Dean stated on the day the old lady put the hat pin in Clarence Kramer's chest, she'd been downtown. And among the things she brought back with her was a pair of funny old glasses. I talked to the man that took over Henshaw's store. He remembers selling these very glasses to Miriam Olcott for 25 cents. I still don't see the significance of them, Sebastian. You don't? Well, I'll tell you. I believe that these spectacles enable the wearer to know the naked, absolute truth about anything or anybody. Have you tried them? No. Why not? Because they weren't intended for mind reading. I think they were intended for seeing the truth about oneself. 
That's the real purpose of these glasses, Alan. And that's what Van Prien was after when he discovered the secret of this funny yellow glass. Van Prien? According to our local historical society, he built the old house out on Bleecker Road. His neighbors called him a sorcerer. <laughs> what do you suppose they'd have called Edison or Einstein or Fermé? Know thyself. Put them away, Sebastian. What's the matter? Afraid I'll put them on and see you for what you really are? No, don't. <laughs> don't worry, darling. When I put these on, it'll be for something important. Go and get your coat. Where are we going? Going out to the old house on Bleecker Road. What for? Atmosphere. I want the authentic atmosphere. When I report on Van Prenn's experiment. By the way, Ellen, that's going to be the title of my last chapter. Know thyself. The city was supposed to tear this old place down last year. Nothing for me, they didn't. Sebastian? What happened to Van Pren after he put on the glasses? What difference does that make? I want to know. S Sebastian, you, you still haven't answered my question. What happened to Van Pren? His old desk is still upstairs. And the same mirror that he used. You've been here before? This morning. I'll answer your question. He hanged himself. Wait here. Helen. I know you think this is a fool thing for me to do, but I have to. It's the only way I have of satisfying my twisted sense of the dramatic. You understand that, don't you? Sebastian, please, let's get out of here. No, I've come this far. You don't have to prove yourself to me or to anybody. Darling, how would it look if I ended my book by saying I lost my nerve? Oh, no, Sebastian, please, please come home. This is wrong. It's unholy. <laughs> Imagine that's what Van Prenn's ignorant neighbors said. It's unholy. No. Well, if Satan's waiting up there, no. so be it. No! No! Oh, no, please! Oh. Oh. Ellen? Yes? Do you know that the greatest men in every century have been hated and ridiculed by men like... Thorgensen and Judge Fluger. Van Prenn knew that. Oh, Sebastian, please come down. So he made the cheaters to find out if he was one of the great ones. <laughs> Evidently, he was disappointed. Wish me luck. Oh.
You're not afraid of your own voice, are you? No. So, you want the truth about yourself, do you? Yes. The junk man, the old lady, and Edward Dean read only the minds of others. Think of the agony they suffered. They were afraid. They let their emotions get out of control. But you're different. You can master your emotions. <laughs>